Lenden will be very important for us. Things will be changing in Russia. Things will work better. mountains, sizzling and shouting from its volcanoes and accompanied always by the washing and beating of the sea. Here in St. Lucia, the sound of independence is about to be played. The tune isn't easy and the words don't always rhyme. But what great feats can be accomplished? if the hearts and minds are willing. Nested in the foothills that come down to the sea, Castries, the capital, is a hilly town of brick and cement, like so many other towns in the region. Right now, an effort is being made to spruce up its visage for the coming event. Streamers, buntings, banners, lights, and it seems as though everybody is pretty keen to get it finished on time. Public services are stepped up and the beautification is off to a flying start. unable to attend the ceremonies, so she sends a cousin, Princess Alexandria, to preside and officiate for her. well-versed in the affairs of empire, manages to smile a lot, and the St. Lucians welcome her and radiate expectant joy at having her there. 
for this auspicious occasion. And the best of suits and white gloves were in abundant evidence. This representative of the British throne symbolizes but one aspect of the island's history. The French, not forgetting their part in the battles for ownership of the territory, sent a military band on board a naval vessel. And this time, the drums of both French and British beat out a tattoo of peacetime activity. The blood stains have gone, and in their place, a further symbol of colonial legacy, the governor's house. of St. Lucia cannot and do not want to forget their colonial past. So, to the fading sounds of the combined English and French rhythms, all eyes raise expectantly for an unblemished symbol, an idyllic search for perfection, that given the will to persevere, the St. Lucians are bound to find. From just above the shoulders to waistline, one catches a glimpse of Grosilay with its houses and palm trees. Gives us the highlight, the essence of a free nation in the guise of a beautiful national butterfly. The colors of green and gold are amazing. Located in the middle of the Windward Archipelago, the island suffers both drought and hurricane in equal volumes. But for most of the year, it's blessed with a mild climate, good conditions for the aubergine and bananas, the country's main export crops.
plans for the future must be implemented speedily. And St. Lucia has embarked on an industrialization journey that will take the island from garments, canning and fishing, through to car assembly and oil refining, such as this facility at Col de Sac Bay, which when completed will accommodate the largest super tankers from Africa and the Middle East. Unlike Snow and Santa, tourists come all year round and any government policy must leave room for them. For all this to work, however, there must be some sort of unity of purpose among the people. But all is not sweetness and light at this time. Here, the opposition political party has decided to boycott the independence procedure and stick a pin into the government's balloon. <laughs> I do regret it as a matter of national importance and one would have expected the uh, people who say they pay a part in national life would have participated. But this is not the first time, it's not new to us. Uh, if you look, perhaps you've seen the, uh, a magazine that we have published for independence. You would see the picture that was taken in the House of Assembly in 1967. And you'll see two absence, two vacant chairs. These are the chairs of the opposition. So we're not unaccustomed to this. Perhaps it surprised people who are not acquainted with our politics. It doesn't surprise me. I do regret it. There is usually a fairly standard procedure towards gaining independence. Did St. Lucia take the same approach? In the Constitution, it was provided that we can either go into independence by making a, re a request and consent order from Britain. We have done that. The other provision was in, in by a referendum. And no country that has become independent, that has been an associated state, that has become independent has used this method. But go through with it, they must. And on the night of February 21st, 1979,
22nd of February, midnight. What, what did you feel at that time? Well, at the moment, when that flag is going up, I thank God as with my whole family and we screamed and screamed and screamed because it's a moment we've been waiting for all our lives. From the time my children grew up with me, that's all we've been talking about is the day when we shall be free. And more than that too, I dedicated the moment to my father, who was an old soldier, an old Garveyite and so forth. And they told me at the 100th anniversary of the emancipation of slavery, there was a huge torchlight procession and he was heading the procession with a Union Jack. But today, his son gave his country its flag. So you could imagine the tremendous impact it had on all of us. And it's not only that, but it's just what it represents to all of us, you know? And that up, up until that moment, we could never have stood up with other people and say that we were free men. We were just pretending, you know, going through the motions of being free, but we were not. And. Um, and one could have felt the emotion of the entire crowd, as if the whole country was behind one, you know, when this is going. Even those who were not even sure of themselves at that moment, as if they knew what the whole thing was all about. has been celebrated with the sound of guns. But these guns have been fired in salutation and not in anger. The distant hills will come the glow of fires. But these fires are fires of celebration and not the bivouac of encamped armies around. From the voices of our children have come songs. But these are not songs that are marshaled in air, but songs of praise and gladness for this day, the day of our independence. And even as we gladly proclaim the birth of our nation, let us remember that with the new dignity comes a measure of new responsibility. The responsibility to make a contribution to the building of our nation. Let every solution remember always that the prime responsibility of building this nation is ours. Today, we leave this safe haven, and today, we move from the protective shadows of the British throne, and we venture out into turbulent international waters. May the Almighty God 
in whose hands we place our hands, guide us in our journey, and may God bless our nation. Vive Saint Lucie, vive Saint Lucie Libre. from Britain amid both booing and cheers. Some say there's nothing so healthy for a nation as conflict, for it separates the men from the boys and ensures a stronger people better able to tackle the serious task of a nation building. And always according to the people's will. <laughs> 